Hello and welcome everybody to this Xbox Life episode 431, Specs Revealed. I am one of your hosts, Brun BJ Swick 33 and with me tonight, you may have already heard him during the intro. <laughs> Mark, Sorry. <laughs> Mark, Wingman709. <laughs> I totally apologize. Hi, <laughs> it's Mark, aka Wingman709. Yes, I just coughed through the intro. I'm really okay. sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. That's, uh, that's all right. As soon as I did it, I was like, oh, I'm not <laughs> muted. <laughs> I was thinking I was. You know, though. Can't that's take what, you anywhere. That's what makes us us, you know. So, and uh, 431, 431 shows, and we still don't know how to mute. <laughs> we'll get it right one of these times, folks. <laughs> yes. And uh, other host, third, the third host, or number one in everybody's hearts, Rob, also known as Presar. Hey, what up? What up? So. All right, guys. Really, one big thing happened that we all thought was an April Fool's joke last week, but turns out it wasn't. <laughs> um, and two things turned out not to be. Yeah. Well, I forget what the second one was. What's the second one? EA thing. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, because uh, somebody from our community got one of the EA boxes. That was pretty cool. But um, you know, we'll we'll talk about it here in a minute. Um, so we are live uh, every Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we go for about an hour, hour and a half, unless I get long-winded, and then we go for four. Um, <laughs> and we are on twitch.tv slash this Xbox Life. Um, and we usually start off the show with what we've been playing. So, Rob, take it away. Next. Not a whole lot for me this week. Okay. Too much, too much craziness going on. How about uh, you, Brun? Well, uh, uh, there was some. There was double XP weekend for um, for Battlefield One. So I pretty much played Battlefield One. Uh, that's all I could really do because I, I, I've been super busy. I. You guys know I've been working with somebody on the other side of the country for for a mobile app. I got it out onto the to the the stores this week, and now I'm working on a second one for them. So it's just been nonstop there. So, but uh, that's that's all. I never even got even to any Mass Effect, which I wanted to get back to. But uh, so I'll let Mark take it. But Mark, before you go, real quick, I just want to let everybody know that we are playing a video through our show right now. And it's uh, this week in Xbox, and it is brought as, you know, Xbox owns this content and things like that. So we're not uh, ripping off their content; we're citing them. So. But all right, go ahead. All right, um, I have been playing some Mass Effect Andromeda, um, and uh, you, you two are gonna have to go. I'm gonna, I'll try to share it to you here in a moment. I took a recording today. Now, they had an update for this game that was supposedly fixing the animations, and I came across a conversation that I'd swear my character looked even worse hmm. than what, what she did before, and it was so bad that I'm like, I got to record this. So I did a record. I will be sure to share that out to you, too, um, uh, directly to you guys' inbox on Xbox Live so you can see the video. It doesn't get lost in your feed, but it looks terrible i'm like this is this is horrible i don't know i i don't really see otherwise i don't really see a difference people are putting comparisons up i think in all the other cutscenes, i think my girl looks a little better her face doesn't look as bad but i think i'm looking at different things other than what other people are i never really cared i had an issue with the like facial expressions you know right. uh, except for the very beginning where like you saw right uh like main writer dude alec writer where like you just saw his eyes going back and forth like no conversation they were just like it was really kind of creepy looking <laughs> <clears throat> but i don't know what they did but it looks weird but i've been playing the game um i don't know i i is it from, i still is very it from four mixed. hours ago four hours ago is that your thing could be. Looks like you're talking if to it was a, a video. A big dude. Like a Krogan. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's the Hold only on, thing me, I've uh, done today. Here, let me zip this in here. Oh, this hopefully this doesn't uh do audio. It's and then probably, brute force. Oh it is. Maybe. Uh, 
but I'm not gonna let an enemy get close <laughs> enough to pry my place. Yeah, hold on. All right, editing on the fly, <laughs> yeah. people. This is why. This is. Yeah, if you can get that full screen, that would be kind of cool for those that are here. But like, I mean, you guys tell me, what do you think of my character? She looks like just terrible. But this is like the rest of the game I played today. She looked fine. She looked normal. Um, but uh, she looks fine speaking. or fine. No, uh, not fine. Well, he looks good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah he. Uh, everyone else looks okay. But yeah, go ahead and play. Oh. It. And then play. Um, she looks just like I don't know what happened. When it, when it was going on, I was just like, what the heck? Um, she normally doesn't look as bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing it right now with the delay. And it's terrible. I'm like, I don't know what happened. So I don't know what their patch was supposed to do, but it made things worse. Um, yeah. That's why I just had to capture that. <laughs> so it was yeah, brutal. It's, it's like you have like no shadows in your nose or anything. Yeah, it's like my nostrils are li are, are lit up. Lit up. Like, there's a light. There's like little LEDs in there. So <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it paused on there right now. So it's just oh yeah, wow. look at that. That's brutal, man. Yeah, hmm. it, this is brutal. It's just like and I, and this was the only scene I've seen. The others like she looks normal. This one came up and I was just like, what happened here? I so I don't know. It was just kind of a who knows, but. Anyway, so I'm playing this game, and guys, I'm really, I'm really mixed on how I still don't feel this game. Um, let's see if I can pull up how long I've been in it, but I'm just like, just not getting it. I play it, but I don't really enjoy it. It's almost like a chore, and it's just constant. I know the other Mass Effects are that way, and people criticize me. Well, it's what do you expect? It's a RPG, blah blah blah. You're supposed to go here and go back and go forth and go back and go forth. You know, I just hate the whole back and forth treading over the same ground. You think you finish a planet and then it's like, oh, no, there's 1,800 more side missions that pop up that are going to have you going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth just to waste time. It's like, I think they do that on purpose to time fill, just to make it go, oh, here's a 200-hour game. Well, you could have done it in like 20 hours, you know, but you made me run back and forth for 180, you know? <laughs> Like, is it really, there, is there really any value in there? But, right. <clears throat> so that's annoying. Um, I don't know. I, I loved the first series and I'm, I'm still not, I don't have the excitement over this game. I'm still playing it. Um, there are some things I'm enjoying, sort of, but it's like, nothing really gets me excited. I'm skipping, I'm skipping the dialogue now which really lets me know I'm just not interested because in the first three games, man, I listened to all the dialogue and I'm not, I'm skipping everything. I'm like, I really don't even care. Let me just go and slog through this. And I'm not sure why I don't have the excitement or why I'm not enjoying it. Like I did the first series. I really don't know why because yeah. no shepherd probably. Well, I don't know. Right. It's either I'm trying to I've tried to figure out because that the, the, the facial animations and stuff like that doesn't no big deal. Whoopie do. I'm not Mass Effect was about more about the story. I mean, and I, I never liked the combat in the original games. It always felt a little floaty. Um, it's not it's not tight. It's not just like Call of Duty. And, I, and I'm, it's not like I'm not trying to say, oh, Call of Duty is great. But Call of Duty to me is some of the best character movement in, in combat. You know, it's just, it's so fluid. It just makes sense. It just works for me. I think it's the best. Um, and there's other games that I think are better that, and I know Call of Duty is a first person and this is third person, but I've played other third person shooters that have better character movement. Um, to me, this one feels a lot like Gears of War. Gears of War is all, is kind of the same way for me. I don't, I don't like the multiplayer and it's like I, I, I feel like I'm always like reacting faster than what my character is. It's always kind of like a little slow, like your character responds a little slower. You can't get your crosshairs where you want. And, and it's just not fluid. I just I don't think the control. I think they're sloppy. But but um, so that was always there. I mean, I've always felt that way about this series. 
So everything that was there before is still there. It's just different characters in a different environment, but nothing. I have no interest in the story. Um, I, I just, the combat I think is really kind of annoying, you know? Um, and I'm just like, I don't know if I'm going to play through this whole story. Uh, I know other people are saying, Oh, keep going. It gets better. But I'm like, my gosh, how far do I got to go before it gets better? Right. Right. Huh. I'm going to pull the game hub up right now just to see how many hours I have on this game. And I, I'm sure it's quite a bit. I've played it a lot, but it, I'm just not feeling it. Let's see. Well, 20, 32, 33 hours. I got 33 hours into this. This is pretty big. And I'm just, <laughs> at this point, if I haven't, if it hasn't gotten me, then it's not going to. Right. You know, but yeah, I uh, think, I think you're far enough in to where you could probably say, you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you. So. And, and another thing I noticed, um, I've hardly touched Halo Wars 2. Oh, I have no, definitely, I guess not. I, I you know, it's kind of like the same thing. I feel like I was playing it. And whatever was there before, whatever magic, it's just like, I'm not feeling it now. Yeah. So so I'm kind of wondering, is it just my tastes? Or what is it that I'm missing? What is it that I want? What Am I just kind of kind of wondering if I'm just starting to maybe outgrow gaming? You know, because this was, uh, Wildlands was something I was super excited about. Um, Mass Effect was something I was super excited about. Halo Wars 2, something I was super excited about. All of them, I think, disappointed. Wildlands was okay, but it it didn't give me what I wanted. Mass Effect is failing to me, you know, personally. For me, it's failing. Right. Um, and Halo Wars 2, it's like, blah, boring. I don't even, you know, so I'm beginning to wonder if it's like, mm, maybe it's me. Maybe I need to find a new hobby. Because well, I, I just, like, nothing is making me happy these days. Yeah, and the other, the, the with with me, it's like, I, um, Wildlands I had fun with, but it reminded me a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. What game am I thinking of? The Division. You know, it's very okay. Division-esque type of game. Um, and then Halo Wars is more Halo Wars, and of course Mass Effect's more Mass Effect. Um, I think, because uh, I'm, I'm experiencing the same thing you as you, Mark. Like, I went and played Battlefield 1 because Battlefield has always been a game where I fell back, I could fall back to, because I have fun just going and having those, you know, 30-minute spurts of a round. I think I am getting back into, like, wanting to just play multiplayer and, and kind of back off story type things. Um, But I think it's to the point where... We need a new IP. Like, there's something we need. A, like, an, I need a new IP or something to 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 try out. Or I just need to kind of, you know, take take a week or two off. I think it's a little bit of burnout because I remember, I think you put something on Facebook or something. You're just like, you know what? I'm I'm just getting too mad or or something about, you know, games or needing to retire. I can't remember what your <laughs> quote was or something like that. And it was it was just like, you know, I kind of I feel the same way. It's like nothing is wanting me like. I haven't had, and we were talking about this at work, I haven't had that Division, or not Division, but uh, Destiny. Like, I loved Destiny when I played it. Um, but it was like, you know, we'd be talking about it at work, and it's like, all right, we're all going to be on at 8 o'clock, we're going to go, we're going to raid, we're going to do this, you know, we're going to do all these things. And, and and wanting to come home and, you know, getting stuff done and things like, I'm like, oh, it's 8 o'clock, I, I want to hop on and um, play some Destiny. I haven't had that moment for, I think, since Destiny. Like I, I don't, yeah. I don't have it. I haven't played any of the Gears game, zero multiplayer. I haven't played any Mass Effect multiplayer. I haven't played any Halo Wars multiplayer. Um, well, maybe I did. Well, no, it wasn't uh, PvP. It was like PVE type multiplayer, like the skirmish or whatever that was. Right. But it's like the only multiplayer I've played is Battlefield One, and I played it this weekend, and I absolutely, I love Battlefield. I just I still love that game and I mean it's just like like I said it's my fallback when I just want something to play I just turn it on I can sink a couple hours into it and feel okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing I kind of feel this itch to go back to is to go back to PC gaming. 
Um, nothing against Xbox or anything like that, but um, it's more of the game. Like well, I was playing Battlefield, and and I get killed in a certain moment, and all I could think of was like if I was on, if I was on PC, I wouldn't have died. If I was on PC, I wouldn't have died. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those type of things. I was like, I could have adjusted. I could have adjusted on the fly. My DPI on my mouse, I could have spun around faster, and, and it's just like all these little things. But I, I think you're just probably getting a little, little, you know, a little bit of burnout. So yeah, um, try try, try, try I... playing, try playing um, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's a new IP. It's something different. <laughs> and... Well, I did. Well, I wouldn't say it's different because it really is. And I did play a little bit of it, but you know, I'm gonna go back to it after I. I don't want to finish Mass Effect, and then that's my goal is to go, go and sink the re- you know just days and a week or two into Horizon Zero Dawn because I played a couple hours of it. But right. um, I wouldn't call it a new game. They call it a new IP, but it's really Tomb Raider meets Far Cry. Right. Oh well. You know, yeah. um, it, it is so so a mix of those two games. I I don't feel like there's really anything new there. Okay. But it does look amazing, and uh, it it looks like it's going to be a real interesting story. So, um, but uh, the other game I played this week was Bulletstorm, and I've been looking forward to this one as well. And what I found out was this game's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> so. Um, I can't believe how much has changed since the game was originally out. And it's like the, the what annoys me, and I say it's annoying, is you can't get into cover. <laughs> I keep wanting to get into cover, and this is not a cover-based shooter. <laughs> and um, I was like, "What the heck?" I didn't even realize that. You know, this is not that. So it's been kind of frustrating. <laughs> yeah. So, but I remember um, the leash and pulling people up and dropping them down. That was the one thing yeah, I always it, remember. It, it's fun. I, I still am enjoying it. In fact, today when I sat down to play, I was like, Mass Effect or Bullet Storm, Mass Effect or Bullet Storm. I'm like, I wanted to play both. I kind of wanted to play Bullet Storm, I think, a little bit more, but I was just like, I'll just do some Mass Effect. And, um, but it, it, it's just interesting that, you know, I, I do like Bullet Storm. It is. Um, it's exactly, you know, playing through, uh, from the original and I, and it's like, as I'm coming across these levels, I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember this and I remember this and you know, uh, it's, it's good. I'm enjoying it. So the leash is a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's interesting though, too, because now, like you said, you remember just doing the thumper and slamming the ground and they go up flying and then you're just picking them off. It's like, as I'm doing these, like when you first started out, it's like, Oh, I, I don't have that, and I had to wait for quite a while to get that unlocked to be able to do that. So, yeah, it's like kind of like, well, I want all these things that I know I'm going to get to eventually, all but right. I just got to be patient. But, yeah, I'm enjoying Bulletstorm. It's it's a fun fun game, so. But that's it. I just played those two this week. All right. All right, some, uh, some quick announcements. Uh, you know, if you'd like to support us on Patreon.com, just like Brian Stanley did this week. And I'm going to replay his alert right now. Um, uh, our latest Patreon. Uh, or patron, I should say. Uh, you can go to thisxboxlife.com slash Patreon. Uh, or if you're one of those people like float a tip here and there, um, you know, it's appreciated. Uh, but if you go to thisxboxlife.com slash donate, uh, you'll be taken to our page there. Um, topic time. All right, so this is why everyone's here today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, they already heard it. They don't need it from us. <laughs> yeah, so GameStop had a data breach. That's why you're all here, right? <laughs> so, but well, that, that was all that was talked about this week, right? There yeah. wasn't anything else in the news. Well, that's all I had was the data breach. Was there something else that happened? Um, so, well, I, w- I was going to share tips on how to track achievements. Stop oh. in the new dashboard, but <laughs> you know that's if we have time. You know, I mean, the, the GameStop story being such a big topic might take us all night. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Scorpio, our specs have been re- or the specs have been released. So we were thinking, you know, 
Japan, you know, they're not going to have a website announce the specs of, uh, you know, the Scorpio. That's just not a Microsoft thing to do. <clears throat> um, but when, when, you know, that comment was made on our show, I don't think we understood that it was Digital Foundry that was going to be doing it. <laughs> because then that would kind of change the whole, uh, uh, the whole view of it. Uh, because this is the group that you would want to do it if you were going to do it, because they are like the go-to, uh, you know, one of the go-to people or go-to groups to look and 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 kind of tear down and tear apart your hardware. So I did see right. a couple. I did or like a retailer was going to announce it. And that's where I was like, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah no right. way, no way. But no, I mean, when I saw this and I saw it was those guys and even some people on the internet was like, okay. Microsoft sent letting Digital Foundry do this. They have like no fear that this thing's going to be the most powerful console since they're having Digital Foundry do it because Digital Foundry would be the group that says you're lying through your teeth Microsoft, but guess what? They weren't. So, here's what you got. CPU. Do you want to go over? let's go over? I mean, everybody's read it. Do we want to go over? Everybody's pretty much seen this, right? Do we want to yeah, I would just, just I would run through it real quick. Just, okay. Yeah. Just in case someone has been under a rock or been on vacation and okay. just getting hit, caught up now. Maybe maybe Braun, they were waiting for us. Okay. To hear anything about it. All right. Here we go. Why would they go elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Project Scorpio eight two point three gigahertz custom x eighty six cores uh, compared to Xbox One's eight one point seven five gigahertz um, and PS 4s eight cores clocked at 2.1 so we're at 2.3 ps4 pros 2.1 and uh yeah there's no uh thing for radeon rx 480 uh gpu 40 radeon compute units at 1172 megahertz uh compared to xbox one's 12 radeon at, uh compute units at 853 megahertz so 40 compared to 12 that's a lot more and uh, also the clock is a lot higher. You're at 1.1 instead of at 853. Uh, PS4 does have 36 instead of 40. Uh, so just four less, but they clock in at 911, 911. Uh, and then Radeon RX 480. That's, that's, like, that's like their uh, their PC, I think. Um, their low-end PC card. Uh, it's 36 uh, Radeon units at one point. One to zero, uh, to one point two six six. So, you know that's a graphics card, a PC graphics card. Um, memory twelve gig, DDR five or R five. Uh, well, yeah. So I and I believe that they didn't mention this here, but I believe that's not just DDR five. It's like the five X. Did you guys notice that? Yeah, well, they're not listing it in this Digital Foundry article, so I would say they would probably okay. have it exactly correct. So I'd right. say it's exactly the same okay. RAM that the PS4 Pro has. It's just more of it. Okay, so yeah, uh, 8 gigs DDR3 is in Xbox One. Uh, 8 gigs DDR5 is in PS4 Pro. And then, you know, 8 to 4, or 4 to 8 gigs for the uh, Radeon 480. Uh, memory bandwidth. Now, this here was just crazy. Um, so, 326 gig per second. And is that gigabits per second? I think so. It's, or no, gigabytes because it's capital B. Um, compared to Xbox One's 68. <laughs> so, 326 compared to Xbox One's 68. Uh, PS4 Pro does have 218. And the Radeon 480 has 220. So it's, you know, 128 more per second. Uh, hard drive is one terabyte. And the uh, optical drive is the 4K UHD Blu-ray, which is the same one that is in, uh, I believe that's in the uh, Xbox One S. Uh, compared to Xbox One, they have it already. And PS4 does not have a uh, 4K drive they just have a blu-ray drive so that's kind of the specs um 
I, I did go through and grab a number of articles because I even kind of posted it in our on our Facebook. I find it really funny that Microsoft has come out and said last year, here's the Scorpio. We're going to have Scorpio. It's going to have six teraflops. It's going to be the most powerful machine that has ever been made. And everybody's like, yeah, okay, we'll see it when we believe it. So then they come out and they say, we're going to have Digital Foundry, give them an exclusive, they're going to break it down, they're going to tell you what it is, and that's what the specs are going to be for uh, the Scorpio. And that's what happened, right? We're all in agreement there. Anything else? Did, did Microsoft say they were going to announce games? Show gameplay? No. Show you the box? I give you the price? You know, the big thing, did they say, did they, were they going to do a bunch of game announcements or anything like that? Because no. the last time I checked, they were just doing the specs. Yes. Okay. Just the specs. So then why they was... got E3. Why was... They got E3 to do. <laughs> yeah. Why was every article just like, hey, Scorpio is the biggest, is is the best console ever made. It's the, it's, you know, the most powerful, uh, but there's just no game announced for it. I mean, you know, there's just no, no exclusives. exclusives. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I was just <laughs> like, right then and there, I was like, oh, there's all the PlayStation media doing damage control already because that's that's all they could bring up. It's like, it's like they've been, t it's in it's in my thing. It's like the boy who cried wolf type of thing. They've been talking about these exclusive stuff for the last two weeks, and I think it's almost in prep, you know, preparing for this to happen. And I was just, and and I will say, most of the comments, people were saying like, "Hey, you know, I own a PlayStation. I don't own an Xbox, but I will say that they weren't going to announce any games. You know, they're going to leave that for E3." And I was just like, "Finally, a gamer with a with a brain." <laughs> so, but I did go out and grab some of the articles, and and one of my favorites. You know, some people are just like, you know, yep, here's the specs. It is what it is. Um, you know, Project Scorpio, final specs revealed. Um, one person did actually say, um, let's see, did I keep it here? One person had the nerve to say, Xbox, uh, Scorp Project Scorpio built for the premium gamer, Microsoft says. So people click on it, you read through the whole article, and they quoted it too, by the way. They had quotes around it. Read the article, no mention of it whatsoever. And the person in the comments was just like, it's kind of weird that you're saying that they quoted this, but yet it's nowhere in your article to be found anywhere. And it was just like, oh, Polygon's going to do what Polygon does, which is just plagiarize and say whatever they want, <laughs> because it was from Polygon. <laughs> so... There's a there's a site that I used to read, but they're not trustworthy whatsoever now because they just played your eyes and make up false information. Um, but one of my other favorites, Project Scorpio focuses X, uh, focuses Xbox on games. So where are they? This was the guy. Yeah. Was, this is the guy that was pretty much you know um, talks about the specs, and then or Erico. So just let me read this real quick. The Xbox is powerful machine. Uh, Digital Foundry revealed today a lengthy rundown of the specs, the code name, blah, 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 blah. It'll be faster, capable of running 4K games. Uh, even older Xbox One titles will see an improvement. In some cases, there's better performance. These are all additions that will surely improve the Xbox experience. But all the talk of better processors and GPUs doesn't solve Xbox One's fundamental issue. It needs more and better games. That was the first. That was pretty much what they talked about for the Scorpio. Then it goes that's, into that's the Sony PR machine. Yeah. Then, it, then to it goes into the news. The reason why the PlayStation Four is handily outselling the Xbox and blah 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 blah. And then they go into um, Microsoft doesn't have an advantage because they don't have released any games, um, and starts to talk about what we've been saying. Well. They they're talking all these exclusives now because of they're they're out you know they're just recently out. So I went up and I looked up Mister 
Andrew Webster, the uh, author of this article on The Verge. And Mr. Andrew Webster, I will call him a glorified blogger because he is not a journalist whatsoever. Um, he is the <laughs> Verge games editor, and games as in plural. Um, he lives just outside of Toronto and plays a lot of Pokemon. As if you would like to know the about... card game. No, I, I don't know. If you'd like to know about Mr. Andrew Webster, uh, this blogger. Or is it the one where you get the, all that exercise? Yeah, I don't know. The blogger on The Verge. So um, I did I did happen to look him up and even went through his Twitter account, by the way, because I wanted to see how much experience Mr. Andrew Stalker. Weber. Stalker. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Weber had with the Xbox One. He doesn't own one. Um, he plays. <laughs> he basically plays. Um, his Switch, he likes... Scrabble. Uh, yeah, he likes the new... Um, uh, what game on the Switch? Sorry. Um, Zelda. He likes the new Zelda. And he reviews and plays a lot of Japanese PlayStation games. So as far as when it comes to experience with the Xbox, I would pretty much chalk it up to nothing. And seeing that he is a not a journalist and yet is a blogger, I have just as much experience as he does. Because he's been writing since 2012, and I've been podcasting since 2006, I think. So, I think that's right. Yeah. Five, so. six. I, I rank him right up there with right about where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even get paid for this. <laughs> so, But that, that was one but of my favorite. The, the whole... The whole exclusive thing, it was a joke because, I, and I, there was an article that came out, I think from GameSpot a year ago or six months ago or something, because I had posted it to a group and, or someone had posted it and I made a comment there that I'm like, yeah, they're listing like 39 exclusive games, but when you go through it, there's like 36 of them are all Japanese only titles. All right. You know, like anybody out of Japan, very, very few people out of Japan are going to care about that. And, um, and and it's not that, and I know I got someone was like arguing with me the other day about, well, Japan is not so small. And I was like, um, it's California is bigger than Japan. And then they're like, oh, but the population. And I'm like, you're, you're missing the point of what I'm trying to say. Right. And the U.S. is not the whole world. And Japan is not the whole world. Uh, Sony does very well in Europe and Japan. Great, I yeah. get it. So the but the majority of those exclusives um, uh, appeal to one country. Now, I'm not saying people in in the U.S. and people in Europe don't buy Japanese games. Okay, mm -hmm. they do, but that that market is so tiny, it, it's pretty much non-existent. So all this big group of exclusives is. Uh, targeted at one country then when they go to the xbox exclusives they're like halo gears um forza that's all they list they ignore everything that's from id at xbox uh, xbox arcade which i like i wish they didn't get rid of that because but look at all the xbox arcade titles that are only on the xbox they don't even include those they probably and, don't even know that they exist. Well, the, the thing is, the article is is false. It's fake news. It's it's building on this fake console war. It, it's just ridiculous yeah. because these people that are like he's not a he's not a journalist. He's as much a journalist. Like Brian, you're right. He, he's as much a journalist as you and I are. And just because he has a degree doesn't make him a journalist. Even if he has a degree. Well, I went to college in journalism, so you know, blah blah blah. But that doesn't make you right. <laughs> It doesn't, you know. <laughs> Was that the count? Yeah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Well, and not I mean, cool, blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not, yeah, I, yes, I'm kind of picking on, you know, this person here. But, you know, and if this is his livelihood, it's his livelihood. That's what he does. Um, but when I think but They of should it, be uh, accurate. They, 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 yeah, they should. Like the person should who tell didn't, the truth. Yeah, the person You know, who, and if he wants to be uh, all on PlayStation, then go work for Sony, Okay. Right. But to work for a, quote, third party or not Sony or not Microsoft or not Nintendo, you don't work for those three companies, but you're going to basically try to slam the others and just say, oh, this is the only one that's worth it. It is ridiculous. It just shows the ignorance on the part of the writer. 
And that that's for every, and that's like I get a, I get upset at IGN because they do the same thing. Right. They, they're so pro Sony, and I, I know it's because that's where all their money's coming from. Mm -hmm. They're getting paid by the advertisements, and Sony's advertising like crazy. Um, and you know, so they're not going to say anything. And I, I can almost guarantee, I can't guarantee because I don't know, but I'd all, I'd be really willing to bet you that they got corporate coming down saying you can't say anything bad about Sony. You know, look at Giant Bomb. Those guys left GameSpot for that very reason. They weren't allowed to give their honest opinion about a game because that company was giving that site money to advertise. You've yeah. got so much conflict of interest, it's ridiculous. You know, um, that, and that's, but yeah, the exclusive stuff was a bunch of crap. And I made a point to you, Bron, with Scorpio. Scorpio just made the... There's a thing, and I don't know how you plan to go through the story, but maybe I'm jumping ahead. You want to talk exclusives? Scorpio is going to be the only console that is going to have uh, allow 900p games that are currently on the Xbox One. That's pretty much the standard. Right, right. To now be running in 4K. That's crazy. So yeah. you want to talk about exclusives. The day this thing comes out... I would like to go into why this is capable uh, in a bit. They're they're talking about all these existing games already in our library that we've had for three years will now be able to be run at 4K. Take that exclusive. I mean, that's an exclusive if you want to look at it that way. You know, that that's incredible what they've done with this device in the in this box and what it's going to be able to do is simply amazing um you know so and if you're going to talk exclusives you got to include everything you can't pick and choose what you want to try to prove your point that doesn't prove your point right so but i don't even want to talk about that i want to get back to scorpio and not exclusives yeah and, and i mean i just i just want to say it's like when i think of a journalist or or people in the games media you're you are you like what you like. If you really like a game, you like a game, and guess you know, guess what? Or, or you know, maybe you shouldn't be the one to review it if you're in so in love with the game that you're not going to be able to give it a fair review. And that's, I mean, honestly, that's the way it should be. But you should be non-biased. <clears throat> you're in games media because you love games. Well, if you love games, shouldn't you love PC, Xbox, and PlayStation? I, I mean, I don't care if. You majority play a majority of your games on Xbox or a majority of your games on PlayStation, but when something cool happens for the other on the on the other side of maybe what you you know what you play on the most, it's not that hard to compliment them on it. You know that that's my thing. Like you're talking about JRPGs and stuff like that, Japanese games. Like if you love JRPG and Japanese games, what console should you buy? I can tell you. You want to buy a PlayStation. There's just no and if or buts about it. That's just what you want to do. Uh, it's just it's just things like that 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 kind of you know gets me. And and it's funny that you're talking about IGN because I remember somebody mentioning GamerGate. If you guys want to look up something interesting, or maybe we can go over it one time. We'll have to go over IGN GamerGate back in 2012 when anonymous IGN employees spoke with Zelda and former. It says the truth is that marketing and PR and readers have a majority influence on reviews. I can tell you that just about every preview and review you read spout, spouts out a lot of marketing message. Journalists journalists don't get it, see it, realize it, or accept it. But the truth, uh, that it, but that is the truth. And they have like a whole list of all the people that are, you know, have been involved and, and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Back to Scorpio. Yeah, back to Scorpio. Oh, and you wanted to we need you wanted to address a thank you before we go further. Oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, I, I, Good luck. Yeah, I know. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if this is supposed to be one word, but I'm just going to spell it out. And it's S B H G E H five. Um, J E H. Uh huh. J E J. <laughs> yes, S B H J E H five. Five. Yeah. If you want to phonetically sound it out in text in, in our chat because you're in there, uh, I will uh, try to say it properly. Uh, but just donated $15, so thank you very much. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So. All right. So back to Scorpio. Yep. 
you made a comment earlier. And when we found out Digital Foundry was doing this, because mm -hmm. I was saying last week, no way, Microsoft's not going to hand this over to someone else. Right. Thinking it was going to be a retailer. You know, someone was talking about, oh, it's going to be a retailer, some kind of thing, and they're going to be involved. And I was like, that just doesn't make any sense. When I read this, this made sense to me, and I thought this was a very bold move because Digital Foundry has been very harsh. Well, everybody's been very harsh against the Xbox. Um, you know, counting the P's, you know, checking the pixels, blah, blah, blah. You know, Sony rules, Microsoft sucks. That's That's been the, the story for three years. So I thought this was really bold because, number one, it shows that Microsoft has a ton of confidence in this thing. Oh, yeah. Because they're bringing in someone who is an expert from the outside. So you're not this this reveal was not a Microsoft PR reveal. This was come on in now with this caveat. This guy had to come to Redmond. He was in house. He got the whole spiel and the story and all the PR from Microsoft and it was obviously probably a very controlled what he got to do. But this guy is coming away and saying what he's saying of at least what, what seems to be or is coming across that it's his own words, you know, it, and, and I, and I, and I think that it kind of gives credence to what Microsoft has said. And what I find real interesting now, this came out was this Thursday. So it's been three days. I have not heard outside of the stupid stuff that Brun was talking about, like, well, it doesn't matter because they don't have the games, <laughs> right. which they do. Sony yeah. hasn't had them until this year, <laughs> you know, and then like everything they did at E3 last year was that I remember I counted them and we talked about it in the show. And I said, Microsoft had this many games total and, and, and I broke it down. This many are coming out 2017, 2018, whatever. And then I broke down the Sony and they had like three, six games coming out in the next 18 months and everything else was two, three, four years away. You know, so they still don't have everything they're saying. And when you're counting all the exclusives, you can't count stuff for that's written for one country. It doesn't really count in the grand scheme of the global sales. But um, I think I'm getting off track here. So, but, oh, yeah. So what it's been pressed me the most and I've thought about is I haven't seen any negativity other than that kind of stupid Sony spin from the fanboys, which right. is, I call is fake news or fake console war stuff. This has been received very well in the media, which we have not had on Xbox One period from day one. Everybody has ripped it apart. They had a really horrible launch. This showed guts, confidence, and not only did Microsoft com uh, give us or did not, they, they showed what they said they were going to do, they actually exceeded what they said they were going to do. Oh. Because one of the things that stood out was this guy from Digital Foundry said he got to watch Forza yep. running at 4K, 60 frames a second, and they still had 30% of system resources still available. Right. Which, like, they, you know, kind of, and what he's saying is like, that's amazing. We everybody was kind of figuring, yeah, you might be able to hit what Microsoft might be able to hit what they're saying, but it's going to be taxed out. You're going to be pushing it. They did it, and they still got resources to spare. Just yeah. like wow. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so I, you know, and that's one of the articles I've seen is uh, even IGN, uh, is it Game Scoop? I think the title of their podcast was, and I haven't listened to it yet. I just saw the, the headline was like Xbox delivers and more something to that effect you know so across the board everything i've heard from I've, I've listened to a lot of people read a lot of articles everything has been completely positive um which is awesome yep I'll yeah when they, when they were back, back to <laughs> yeah when they were running when they were running that 4k at 60 frames oh no i just broke my Crash microphone this isn't <laughs> I have to hold this the rest of the time. Um, we'll That'll just... make for some nice noise. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, isn't it? I'm gonna have to hold this the whole time. My th whole thing <laughs> fell off the side of my desk. <laughs> Ugh. 
Yeah, I might have to fix this here in a second. Um, the one thing when they were saying that they was running at 60 frames a second was that, um, yeah, 70 to 75 utilization, I think, was the amount that was in there. So, yeah, so much room left to, to spare on that. So, yeah, definitely a good thing. Rob. Yes, sir. Tell me, I know you've been busy, but have you have you been able to read any of the news on this thing? I haven't read a lot, but I watched the video that they had. Yeah. And then uh, Major Nelson also uh, had it on his uh, on his radio. Yeah, with was it Albert station. Cornello? Yeah. Yeah, that was it. So what stood out to you? So, like, you know, there had to be something you're just like, yeah. Or you're like, well, that's stupid. Well, you know, um, Scorpio is one of those things of, you know, it, it's cool to have, but I think to some degree, all of that stuff is kind of anticlimactic to a degree until you get something that showcases it. So, for example, like you get a new hard drive for your Xbox. You're like, I need a new hard drive. I need a new hard drive. So you install it and you copy your games over and you're like, okay, that uh, wasn't too exciting. But you got more storage. You know what I mean? And yeah. hearing all these specs, I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, it's it's great to see the performance, like, of the graphics and all. is like, what, four times more? It's got more memory, more everything, you know, higher price and all. It'll do 4K, uh, you know, all that good we don't, stuff. We don't know the price yet, don't. I don't yeah, say yeah, higher yeah. price because we don't know the price. <laughs> Well, it'll be a higher. Price. Uh, it'll be higher than the S. Okay, yes, guaranteed. Yeah, yes, yes. So, but yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to be like two grand or anything. It, just, it will have to be one million dollars. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I would think it's actually. You know, uh, let's. I'm not going to go into the price. Never mind. So four thousand dollars. It's going to be a dollar a P. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think. I think it would be reasonable if it came in at the same entry point as the original Xbox. One, so for four ninety nine, no connect, you know, for a premium console, I think that's reasonable. And I mean, we paid, we paid that for the original. But um, you know, it, it's great to talk about specs and all that stuff. But until we actually see what it can do, I think that's when you can actually full on go into like lust mode, and you're like, I want this thing. But right now, we don't have anything. Hopefully they'll show off some goodies in E3, which is what, um, like two months away now, a little bit over two months. Yeah, roughly. I think it was the 13th of June. Yeah. We're about eight weeks away. And I mean, I think it's cool how they did it. Um, you know, showing it to those digital foundry guys. I mean, that was cool and all, but overall what I like is that they released something. They released something. They talked about the specs, which I don't say it's vague, but you know, it doesn't really give us a lot of detail about the console. But it's something. And then well, there's, at least there's we know more what stuff that's coming about. from this guy. Yes. Um, right. Because one thing that I caught is he said near the end of his and so there was a video they did on Thursday along with his story. Well, he's done a couple others. I saw another one with him and another guy, and they were diving more into stuff. Um, I didn't get a chance to go through the whole thing, but on his initial video on Thursday, he said near the end of his show or his video, something to the, the thing about, like, he, he, he hasn't even talked about what's coming around backward compatibility, you know? There's there's stuff that he saw that he is yet to even reveal to us that he's still aware of and that he's going to be discussing in coming the, the probably the coming week or two. Um, but he made a comment about back compatibility, and I'm like, what are they doing around backwards compatibility? Are back compat games going to be able to go up to 4K somehow? You know, are are we going to see games that were on the 360 get some kind of upscaling? I mean, that, that, that's the thing is he made the comment that there's stuff he's excited about, like that he hasn't even talked about yet, that nobody even knows about yet. Um, right. And I'm like, wow, they're, you know, 
that's kind of cool if you can go back in the category in the catalog and somehow upscale. And and the one thing that I think they can do this is because, and, and this is what they've talked about with Scorpio. Scorpio has really approached the console market in a very different way. So in the past, uh, up until the PS4 Pro, all these companies have taken, uh, and I guess you could say the Switch because the Switch came out last. So the Switch. <clears throat> these console manufacturers say, okay, here's going to be our specs. Here's our hardware. Here you go, devs. Make your games work for it. That That's the way it's always worked. You release the hardware, and everybody else writes to that hardware. What Microsoft did with Scorpio was they basically kind of flip-flopped that thinking and said, okay, we're going to beef the hardware up, but we're going to stay compatible to keep it still all Xbox One family. And they went back and they've designed this thing based on current game engines that are running and and you are and they basically are working that angle so they're coming from instead of designing the hardware and making everybody write the software for it they're designing the hardware and designing this hardware to run the software more efficiently a lot better and it's just like that's why they're able to get all this stuff to go up because they're they're working with what's existing in the software engines, which I think is awesome. Right. Because uh, isn't it what they did basically? Like, well, traditionally, you would come up with a new console. It would have some kind of graphics chip in it. Um, I don't know how customized it would be, but, uh, you know, specifically for that platform. But uh, it seems like it's like a generic chip that they cram onto the board. You get some kind of CPU memory and all that good stuff. And what they were talking about on the Major Nelson podcast was that they actually offloaded a lot of stuff from the CPU into the uh, graphics system. Like, what, they put uh, DirectX now instead of, like, being handled by the CPU, it's now done by the GPU? Is that kind of like what you're talking about? Where they're Essentially what they did is they almost took the entire... Uh, ecosystem and then created hardware to optimize yes the regular functions of the yes. system right so it's like yeah. when the game is running the hardware says oh you're on unreal unreal engine 4 we already know how to optimize like it, it, it's like the hardware is going to optimize stuff based on the engine of the game and and this is for stuff that's already out so like um Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, okay, probably running uh, at, at 900p on the Xbox One. This is going to get, boom, upscaled on Scorpio. It's going to be able to play it on 1080p for those that have 1080p TVs and 4K for those that have 4K TVs. They're going to they're gonna be able to do that. And I'm just like, and, and, and I don't get, you know, I'm not the expert. This isn't me. This is what the experts are saying. And my thought is, how can you make a game look 4K if it wasn't designed in 4K or, you know, it, it doesn't have 4K assets? I don't get that. And maybe and maybe they're going to need to do a patch yeah. for Scorpio to give it true, but you can at least upscale to make your 900p game look a lot better, you know, just by adding more pixels and doing all this stuff because they know how the game engine works. So... I think this is really kind of cool because Microsoft with the 360 was a very developer friendly console. It, it almost seems like they got kind of away from that a little bit. And now they're trying to get back to that. They're trying to really get the devs on board and they already announced Microsoft. I think announced, I believe it was Microsoft said that battlefront Two, red dead redemption Two, uh, crackdown, uh, which obviously is going to, that's obviously going to be in 4k cause that's Microsoft game. And there was another one, uh, well, Forza, Forza, I think, was the other one, and Sea of Thieves. So three of those are Microsoft games, which obviously are going to they better be in 4K. But they did say Battlefront 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2 as well are on board to do full 4K gaming on Scorpio. So, I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2 is like, I can't wait to get that game. I mean, and then to have it, because it looked amazing back in the day, and it was such a great game. 
I'm really excited to see what that thing's going to look like, or even Battlefront 2, because I thought Battlefront looked amazing yeah, it did. on the Xbox One. It was jaw-dropping the first time I saw it. When a stormtrooper came around the corner, I thought I was watching a movie. I was like, it looks so real. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know? Um, so I can't wait to see that thing in 4K. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, too, real quick, is that's just those games that they announced there. Every third-party game that comes out in all platforms, you know, for every console platform, will look best on uh, the Scorpio. I mean, Absolutely. it's just hands down. You know, you, you we want to talk about Destiny. I mean, look, Destiny, you know, hey, go pre-order Destiny, even though you don't know what you're getting yet. Um, Destiny... You know, they talk about all this exclusive content and stuff. We've t talked about it time and time and time again. Um, but the funny thing is, is like, do you want... Now you got to decide, do I want it to look the best? Or do I want to get this gun for a year? And that's your decision you have to make now. Because, well, you can play it on PC, of course. And you can make it look as... It, it could play in 4K at 60 frames if you got the graphics cards to handle it. Um, but if you want to play it on a console... Hey, you'll get 4K out of native 4K 60 frames. Yeah, you know, out of the the Xbox uh, Scorpio, unless Bungie decides to not do that, and and or you know, put a bug in there on purpose to you yeah. know, make it seem bad. Seems like something they would do. They're doing. They're yeah, hose, okay. they're, yeah, they're hosing the gamers. They might as well hose the company, right? Well, the other thing too is I've heard the argument of um, from from gamers um well i don't need a 4k system i don't have a 4k tv you know well, why do i need that <clears throat> um it has been projected that this this next year 4k tvs will make up 60 to 80 percent of sales yeah absolutely I, um, I mean it, it's it's that's what everything is basically being sold i mean i saw a 4k tv at walmart the other day like a 55 inch Those or 800 bucks crazy or yeah i'm like you you can buy a 4k for the same price as a 1080p i mean the, you know the 1080ps are like dirt cheap now you can buy a 4k at un, a sub thousand dollars so it's it's not like like ridiculous like oh there's this huge price tag yeah tvs and the thing is is tvs used to last forever they don't last forever anymore um People buy them a lot more frequently, and people rotate them. They put them in other rooms, um, and but yeah, why not make it? If 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 they're projecting sixty to eighty percent of the TV sales are gonna be four K, why would you not put out a four K system at this point coming out that same year? Why do ten eighty P and go? Ah, we'll do it once everybody on the planet has it because it's technology. It's constantly changing. I mean, there's already I already heard about one company doing an eight K TV. Well, that, that's ridiculous because, you know, we don't even have 4K content that's just starting to go. But like cable companies and satellite companies, this year you're going to see a lot of that 4K content now making its way into the to the cable companies. And once people have that, they're going to naturally go and upgrade their televisions. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that's a real moot point. People are, it's just another, it's a kind of a ridiculous argument. You know, it's like you complain, and this, these are the same people would be like, they want the bleeding edge, and then when you get the bleeding edge, they're like, well, I don't need that. You know, they make up an excuse that they don't need it. You're just making up the excuse because you may not have the cash to buy the TV. That doesn't mean that they did anything wrong. Maybe you just need to save your money or change your habits or get a better job or get a second job or, you know, find a different hobby. It doesn't mean that they did wrong because you can't buy a 4K TV. And, and I mean, Microsoft needs to make sure they get that message out there. You know, with the, and I think that's what they're trying to do with like all 360, you know, backwards compatibility games and Xbox games will look better even if you don't have a 4K TV. Right. With Scorpio. all your current titles will run at 1080p. Right. Everything's going to perform better. Everything's going to look better on your 1080p. So that's the brilliant part about right. this, too. They're not forcing, they're giving you more freedom to do what you want. Those that have the, the empty pockets or deep pockets, and are buying the, the latest greatest they got a new toy we got a new toy we're going to be able to buy right those that say i don't have enough to buy a new tv and a new console buy your console and you're gonna your current library is going to look a lot better it's going to run better 
you're going to hit those 1080p marks now finally and guess what next year the or, you know maybe maybe come black friday you can pick up a 4k tv dirt cheap well that's you that... know and then then you're going to be boom you're going it, to it's automatically going to give you the 4k it's going to yeah. Your, your box you have sitting there is going to just boom overnight. Wow, look how amazing it is. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing, too, is, is well, two things. To, to finish the thing on the, you know, Microsoft has to get that point out, make sure they stress that, because when you listen to a podcast or whatever, like IGN and things like that, and, and I don't remember which, one, which podcast it was, but, you know, when they're saying, oh, well, you know, it only really makes sense. If you don't have a 4K TV, you really don't need it, you know, when that's being said by the media and stuff, that is not, that's not good. So Microsoft needs to make sure they put a stop to that. Um, and then the other thing was, is, uh, you mentioned black Friday. So Scorpio is going to be coming out around the same time as, as probably around there. Right. So black Friday deals and 4k TVs is going to be massive this year. That yeah. that's going to be the best time. Don't don't run out and buy a 4K TV right now if if you're wanting one, or don't don't get your hopes you know all dashed or smashed or anything like that for the Scorpio. Because when Black Friday rolls around this November, you're going to have 4K TVs for five hundred dollars. And and you know what? If you don't get the if you don't get the Black Friday deal, Super Bowl Sunday is only a couple months away, and there's always massive deals. Oh yeah, prior to the Super Bowl. Yep. Yep. So. But, uh, all right. Um, I think that was all that I had for it. But, oh, the other thing, too, was they said that for the looks of it, um, it it's basically, from the way I take it, it's going to be the Xbox One S very similar looking. Yeah. Um, it's got all the same ports. It's going to, um, it sounds like the Xbox One S adapter for Kinect is what you're going to need for the Scorpio. Uh, they will not have a connect port. It will be the USB adapter. Um, but it sounds like it's got the same amount of ports and everything. Um, it's got liquid cooling, which was something we haven't talked about, um, which I think is pretty cool. That's typically reserved for high-end. Ah, uh, get it? Ah, uh, good one, Mark. What? Liquid cooling is cool. Uh. Oh. <laughs> ah, I made a funny and yeah. didn't know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, otherwise, it's it's... I don't know. I think the form factor, I'm going to guess, is going to be a little larger than the S. Um, if it's smaller, I'd be a little surprised. Or if it's the same size, I'd be surprised. Right. But it's going to have an internal power supply. Um, I like but, the look uh, of the S, though. I yeah, love the, the, I love the look nice. of my S. My S is, I mean, I think it's sharp looking compared to the original. The yeah, I'll so. tell you what, my PS4 Pro is ugly. <laughs> I, when I pulled this out of the box, I was like, what? Or the it's quadruple, like the quadruple. Look at it now. I'm glad it's black and kind of in the shadow, so I don't have to see it. Yeah. <laughs> the triple stack, yeah, yes. triple stack, it's, a double stack. It's yeah. just an ugly console, but, but you know the S is a it's just a square box, but it still looks nice. I like the original Xbox One, but um, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot. Maybe some. I would imagine some kind of minor things um, to make it more premium product you know gold make it look a little maybe some I mean, i don't know some <laughs> nice trim to it or gold plated maybe some glowing <laughs> leds or something I, I you know you never know it's going to be something a little different but i think it's going to be pretty resemblant of the xbox one as yeah. and it sounds like microsoft has sort of confirmed that you know it's, it's the it, same design uh, group same design it's yeah it's going to be a little different but i wouldn't expect it to be it's not going to be far off from what the S is. Right. Again, it's not a new console. No. So it, it it's, and that was a, a thing they were talking about on an, uh, the digital, the digital foundry thing I was watching today was a separate with the, with the main guy that we saw Thursday, he was talking with someone else and um, it's not, they were talking about the question came up from the one guy, is this a, a next gen console? And he said, well, you've got the Xbox one, the PS3, PS4, and you got the Pro, and then you've got Scorpio. Now, from here to here, that's a huge leap. Yeah, so that's almost Xbox it's almost Scorpio like, yeah. is like a is like a next gen jump uh, 
thing. But since the PS4 Pro is inside the same console cycle from here to here, not as big of a leap. Um, so it's still, you know, it's kind of depends on how you look at it. But it's, you know, he basically saying this is not next gen. Um, it is really pushing um, the, this current cycle, you know, kind of like putting it to the max, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, but it's, it's, you know, depending on where you're coming from, it could be you've got an original Xbox One. This could be feel to you like a next gen console. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got the 4K TV, HDR and all that stuff. And you're now seeing that for the first time. But. Well, and that's and then Sony's going to have to spin it to where they're going to make it sound like it is the next generation, or they've moved to the next generation, almost like they've moved on because they've been so defeated, you know, type of thing. And I'd imagine almost Sony would want that person to say, "Oh yeah, it is the next generation," because you know it's going to be nonstop compared to the PS4 Pro. I don't think it should be compared to the PS4 Pro. I don't think. You know, because it just beats it. It beats everything, right? Um, but that's like Sony's probably like, oh, stop comparing it to our PS4 Pro. It just makes ours look like it's not very good. <laughs> so they're going to try to spin it somehow to make it, you know, make it almost seem like they're a next gen. So they don't compare them. So. Well, Sony has said that they're, you know, they've said this is not PS PlayStation 5. They'll, they'll let you know when the PS5 comes out. So right now, I think they've already started. They know they're they're they are not the top dog anymore. When this thing hits the street, they are not the best console anymore. Nope. Um, and and I would say, well, let me put it this way, because I would say you could already argue that the that they're not currently the Xbox One S and the PS4 Pro. They're they are competitors. Right. They're, that's the thing. And. There, that's where the PS4 Pro is com competing is at the Xbox One S level. And if you remember back, wasn't it last E3, that we were kind of shocked because Sony was supposedly going to announce, talk about their new console that was coming out um, the end of last year. And then there was like, like it went dark. Nothing happened because Microsoft came out and said, Scorpio's coming out, six teraflops. Sony dropped everything. I'm convinced oh, it completely yep. dropped any discussion of the pro completely out. And, and it's kind of like, it was just kind of released because they knew they couldn't compete. Microsoft basically killed them for their PR machine. So now that the specs are out and now we know that there's no way for anybody to argue the specs of it, Microsoft is top dog once again in the hardware Part. now sony's going oh but now we've got the games well you haven't had the games for three years but you're trying to you're trying to make it sound like you've got something that microsoft doesn't but microsoft still has exclusive coming out people that complain well yeah but it's halo it's gears it's forza they sell very well on this platform people like those everybody wants the next gears the next halo the next forza you know so to, to use established enjoyed loved franchises against microsoft is Again, fake news, fake, you know, building up a fake uh, console war type of thing. Um, and uh, and that's what Sony's going to have to do. They're going to have to now, they can't use the hardware. And, and even today, if you really look at the specs, they're, they're, I would say the Xbox One S kind of edges up the PS4 Pro um, because it does have the uh, 4K Blu-ray drive, which the PlayStation PS4 Pro does not. Um, but <clears throat> that's the competition. Xbox Scorpio has no competition. Right. And now it's been proven by a third party that it's going to leave it in the dust. Right. Um, so <laughs> with room to spare. Yeah. I like, I like <laughs> Hawk's message. The new narrative is that resolution does not matter anymore. It only mattered before, but not anymore. <laughs> you know, it's going to be like, Oh no, 1080p, 900p. No. 1080p, 4K, you don't need 4K. 1080p is fine. 1080p is <laughs> yeah. okay. You can They'll upscale have, oh, to 4K-ish. I mean, it's okay. It doesn't need to so be 60 this, frames a second. <laughs> this year they'll have, you think they'll have uh, Sony people coming out and going, 
look, on PS4 Pro, here's how we share a game and hand the disc, and then they're going to put it in, and they're going to play, and it'll be like 16-bit graphics. Yeah. And they're going to be like, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs uh, 4K? <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, it's... um. I mean, I got a, I just bought a PS4 Pro. I, I, I don't like Sony. I bought this, you know, again, it's for the games. That Lethal Migraine said, you, you don't play the box, you play the games. Right. Yeah. Yes, that's why I have a PS4 sitting here, because I want to play Horizon Zero Dawn. I, and once I'm done with that, I'm going to get Uncharted 4. Um, yeah, I'm buying it for the games. I hate the Sony console. I hate, I just do not like it at all. Um, it's... And I like what Microsoft has done, but it doesn't mean we've got to narrow our focus on just one thing. Yep. But I am glad to see, I, I like Microsoft, I like Xbox, I'm glad to see this come out on a very positive note. Right. I'm excited for what this can do. I hope this helps, but again, I want to give everybody just a reminder, come holiday, when Xbox One Scorpio, okay, is whatever it's called, is like selling the least amount of consoles, it doesn't mean it's a failure because it's probably going to sell less than everything else because they're still going to have the S at probably half the price. Yeah. Okay. Um, and people are going to go, people go with the cheap and people, there's going to be a lot of people who go, well, I don't need all that. It plays the same games. Why not just, and Microsoft is fine with that. Phil Spencer said that. Yeah, he they're said they expect to selling a... a lot more S's yep. than they do Scorpio. Yep. Yep. It, it's not going to mean it's a failure, but the, the you watch the, the quote gaming be, gaming media will start the whole thing once the, the number excuse me once the numbers come out about how Scorpio is a failure because it's not selling 20 million consoles in a month, right. even though nobody did. Well, I mean the PlayStation but, Four PlayStation Four Pro hasn't been selling like super awesome either but that doesn't mean that the playstation 4 is a pro is a is a, because, is a failure there's a, there's a slim version yeah. there's a cheaper version yeah i mean <clears throat> i i happen to know commander sisson used to, used to be eventual loki he just bought one he bought the slim i bought the pro and i'm like i only bought the pro because i'm like well i just bought a 4k tv I'm yeah. like, i should buy that one just because to right. get the best and i wanted horizon zero dawn i might as well make it look the best right but if I hadn't had that TV, I would have bought the Slim as well. Right. Right? Why spend the extra money if you're not going to get the advantage? So, you know, a, and a lot of people that aren't buying TVs yet and are in that 1080p world don't need to buy the extra. But right. if you have the money, there, the Scorpio does give you the ability to get that now, upgrade your current library to a better performance and visuals, and it'll be there to upgrade you when you upgrade your TV. And it's the only console today that can do that. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what, we are creeping on time limits wow. already. Wow. Um, so the list of stuff I here. Yeah, so the list of stuff we have here, <laughs> let's try to burn through the rest of it. Because I don't want to leave it. I'm going to talk about, you know, cover it. Because uh, we also have three voicemails and one email. So. But what we, uh, well, GameStop. So I the think. game, uh, GameStop data breach I mentioned it earlier. I just want to mention anybody that does GameStop, um, you know, there supposedly was a breach where credit cards and information were stolen. Um, it did not mention if it was just people who bought it online or wherever you. I think it has to deal with online only. I don't think it has to deal with like if you have your information on their site. Um, but the bad part here is. You put your name and information in and your credit card and you could save it. Um, but the thing that you're not supposed to do that they did was they actually saved the CVV number on the back of the cards, Oof. which is a massive no, no. And so, oh, yeah, yeah. Supposedly these things mm -hmm. are, were already caught on being sold on, you know, you know, hacker sites and things like that. So if you have a, a card with GameStop, put in their in their thing or whatever you should probably want to look into that but that's all for that but uh the atmos who put that one in because the rest one, of the I'll, I'll say it's one of our voicemails too so yeah i did the rest of them okay go ahead Rob. 
Okay, um, we got a little bit of an update. Uh, oh, which oh, now I forgot if this was for everybody. Oh boy. Anyway, <laughs> Adobe Atmos and DTS X audio support is now available for Xbox. This is something that Microsoft's been talking about for quite some time. Uh, I think going back into last year. And uh, it just enables uh, a lot more speakers that we probably don't have in our homes. So I don't know how much this really affects most people because I think most people are still... Uh, okay, I should not say most people because myself, for example. <laughs> I'm still on the 5.1 speaker thing at home and uh, it suits me just fine. Don't want to buy a new receiver. Don't want to buy more speakers because you can't just buy another two speakers. You have to buy a whole new set, of course. And that gets kind of pricey. Right. But uh, uh, the Dolby Atmos and DTSX, uh, the capabilities of this is uh, even beyond 5.1, 7.1, where it does something like there's up seal, or speakers up, high, down, low, something like that. You, if you're really interested to see exactly what this is, uh, just ask Google. Google knows all, of course. <laughs> so um, the support is there. And um, take advantage of it if you can. If you're uh, lucky enough to just bought a whole new system, audio system for home, on your receiver, home theater, whatever you want to call it, now you can take advantage. Cool. Uh, moving on. Oh, do you guys have any comments on that? Nope. Before we move on? Nope. nope. Okay. When the Xbox One S came out last summer, uh, one of the things that Microsoft offered uh, through a promotion was you get a free Kinect um, adapter yep. thingy uh, just by sending in uh, your serial number of the old and new systems. I don't remember if they needed a Kinect or not, but uh, after a couple of weeks, you got a huge box <laughs> in the mail. Yeah, I remember and uh, this thing was actually kind of massive. And uh, I've got mine right over there. She can't see off camera, but uh, yeah, I think this is actually how they smallified the Xbox One S, the original. Or I'm sorry, the Xbox One into the Xbox One S. They removed all this Connect crap from inside the box. So uh, this promotion is now over. So if you did not take advantage of it, or if you're a brand new uh, Xbox One S owner and you're looking to use your uh, day one console connect or, or whatnot, you can still get the adapter. It's just going to cost you and it runs $40 or thirty nine ninety nine plus whatever you're going to be charged shipping tax. And whatnot. So it uh, looks like this ended uh, in March and um, if you took advantage. Great. If you didn't. Oh, well, I don't know if it really even matters to you. <laughs> Um, another thing is a quick little tidbit that uh, I really didn't hear mentioned very much of. But one thing that Microsoft is doing is they're kind of opening up the Xbox and Microsoft stores sort of to uh, developers, particularly the Xbox One store, where um, it's going to be easier than ever for people to publish software uh, and, and such. Well... One thing that they just banned from the stores, this is both the Windows Store and the Xbox Store, is emulators. So I think they pulled off uh, a couple emulators from the Windows Store. I don't think there was anything in the Xbox Store yet, but uh, they pulled the stuff before it uh, proliferated. So if you had any thoughts about playing your old X uh, Nintendo ROMs or who knows what, Atari titles and such, uh, it will not happen on the Xbox, unfortunately. Yeah, just remember, everybody, that is illegal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a, it's kind of a bummer, you know, for the games that you can't well, find or whatever. I think there needs to be something here in the future to modify or to change that, um, but as of right now, it is, it is illegal. So. Uh, Xbox sucks. Well, they won't let me run emulators. Yeah. Well, I think some of the stuff... <laughs> I think can't some of, like, stuff. the super, super duper old games, I think all of the copyright stuff has lapsed on it. Because oh, yeah. the copyright stuff, does, it's, it's, isn't it like 20 years or something like that? Unless it like gets renewed or whatnot. Yeah, I don't So remember. a lot of those, 
Yeah, a lot of those, I think, uh, well, not a lot. I think some of those games from the 80s, like for the Atari and, and such, uh, those uh, might be available. However, I don't know if you'd really want to play them. Yeah, most people want to do Nintendo and like Sega and stuff like that, and those are still copyrighted. So, Yeah, yeah, it's more recent stuff. But, all right. Backwards compatibility titles are always growing, it seems. They seem to add a couple uh, titles every week. Uh, last week, we got two titles added. That's Sid Meier's Civilization Revolution and Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. So I think we're approaching close to 400 titles. And uh, if it's backwards compatible, it's pretty good chance it might be the uh, Games with Gold title uh, next month. So who knows? And lastly, a quick little news recap, some stuff that we haven't covered yet. Um, uh, Aaron Greenberg uh, was asked about the status of the Xbox Design Lab. The Design Lab is where you get to customize your controllers to, um, what was it, like millions of different color combos and of the case, the buttons, the, uh, the sticks, the pads, you name it. Everything is customizable on there. So you can have yourself a rainbow of colors on your controller if you'd like. <laughs> but uh, Aaron Greenberg had mentioned that uh, for now, at least uh, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be North America only. And uh, we'll see if it uh, proliferates outside of North America sometime in the future. But right now, it's just North America only. And um, uh, lastly, there's going to be, or actually there's an option to uh, install Xbox One uh, UWP apps through the Windows Store. So um, looks like you can install some titles now on your Xbox through the Windows Store, not just the Xbox app on Windows. Uh, basically, what you need to do is uh, you find your title in the Windows Store, and uh, you install through there, and it'll queue up for download on your Xbox One. That's interesting. And yeah, I'm not sure uh, how big the list of UWP titles is right now, but uh, I wonder if they're just going to make it so that you, you can eventually just buy Xbox games through the Windows Store, through the Xbox app, on the Xbox, on the Marketplace, on the web. There's more places to buy the stuff. Although I think you can... I mean, you can buy the Play Anywhere titles in the Windows Store, right? And then get them on your Xbox. But I don't know if that cues it up. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we'll that's, look into it. yeah, yeah, interesting. And uh, that's about it. All right. So now on to the community. All right. So community time. Uh, if you go to thisxboxlife.com and click on contact, you can send in a form email to us or email us directly, contact at thisxboxlife.com. If you'd like to send in a voicemail, we got three of them today. I believe two are being entered into the giveaway. Um you go to thisxboxlife.com, click on send voicemail on the right-hand side of the site, uh, follow the prompts, and that'll go in. You do have 60 seconds. Um, Actually, 90. I think, isn't it? I think it's uh, 90 seconds. I got people cut off at 60 today. Oh, okay. So, um, trying to see if my mic's going to fall off my stand again. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I caught Timber. Up. Yeah. So, um yeah, we'll we'll see the one that cuts off here today, but uh, yeah, that's how we might we... need an alternate service. Yeah. Um. Yeah, which is record yourself and email it to us as as simple as that too. If if we don't want to, we'll take MP3s. Yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um. If you go to thisxboxlife.com slash Twitter, you'll get to our Twitter account. Uh. If you go to thisxboxlife.com slash Facebook, you'll get to our Facebook group. Uh. Closed group, but just you know, pitch in a request and. We'll, we'll bring you on in. And uh, so, real quick, let me go back 
here to the voicemail. Uh, let's get through our voicemails here. So, I'm going to play Mr. I'm going to say Coggin1973. Hi, this is Kong 1973 calling in from Denmark to a show. Just wanted to hear your uh, thoughts about the newly released specs on the Xbox Scorpio. I'm totally crazy about it. Uh, I already pre ordered it in GameStop actually today. Thanks for a great show. Uh, bye. From Denmark. So I uh, wanted to know what our thoughts were on the Scorpio, our specs on the Scorpio. Uh, if you're listening, you've already heard them. But thank you for the thing. And he said it was crazy. He's already pre-ordered his. Wow, I didn't know it was on, available for pre-order. On GameStop, he said he pre-ordered it already. He I said wonder that, if that it's was a Denmark the, thing. Yeah, that was the crazy. He said the crazy thing is, you know, he pre-ordered yeah. it today. That's awesome. Yep. Good for him. All right. And our next one here is from Leah. I'm not going to say last name. Hello, my name is Leah. I am from Denmark. I hear you every Friday because my boyfriend listens to you. My boyfriend's birthday is coming up. Which game would you re- recommend? He he had been very happy to play Homefront. Now I'm wondering if you know Mr. Kongen1973. <laughs> so uh, uh, birthday's coming up. Likes home for, likes playing Homefront. Do we recommend a game? Um, unfortunately, I don't know what recent games you've been playing. Um, yeah, none of us have played the more recent Homefront either. No, well, yeah, true, I haven't. So it would be tough to know what that's like, but, um... Well, if it's a first-person... That's a first-person shooter, so... I mean, Battlefield 1 is a good game. Um, Titanfall 2 is a good game. It's got a good story and multiplayer. Um, Wildlands is was good. I mean, we've all played that. Uh, yeah, Wildlands. The thing about that is, there, there's a you're going to get value for your money. Yeah. Uh, same with like Battlefield. If you get it, you know, if you're playing it for the online, um, those two games, you're going to get a lot of value and a lot of time mm-hmm. uh, for your money. So, yeah. And Battlefield, I don't know. Can you get that at a discounted price now? I mean, it's been up for quite a while. Or is that one of those on like Call of Duty? They of don't. Times. It's they don't been on sale price. a number of times. Yeah. They just don't drop the. Um, well, when it does go on sale, the best thing to do is get one of the upper level ones on sale because then you get the pass yeah. with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because it's been almost fifty percent off. Yeah. At least twice, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think the hundred and something dollar version was all the way down to like normal sixty dollars or sixty nine dollars at one point. I would recommend those. Those are all good games. If you haven't played any Mass Effect, I would stay away from the new Mass Effect game for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Try to get those out. I might have to look him up and see what else he plays and send him a message. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking at him right now. I'm trying to see his uh, game list. <laughs> Got some Skylanders on here. Imaginators. Uh, looks like that's what he's playing right now. Those are all the achievements I'm seeing. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Battlefield One. He plays some Paladins. <laughs> He's playing Paladins, which I think is um, There's something uh, special with that right now. Right? Ambassadors. Yeah, that was released to the Ambassador program. Yeah. Um, oh, he's got Wildlands too. Yeah, he's got Wildlands already. So, Battlefield One. Battlefield One. <laughs> Dishonored <laughs> Two. Also. Oh, one. Dishonored Two. Yeah. Demo. I, yeah. Do the demo. Of Dishonored Two. I forgot to download that. I'm gonna have to get that downloaded and try it out. I'm wondering Good if he, he likes Paladins. Isn't Paladins kind of similar to, like, Overwatch? Yeah. That whole... Overwatch but, on the uh, PC is still going pretty strong. I don't know as much on the console or not. I'd have to check. So. All right. But thank you for the voicemail. And uh, you two are uh, in on the uh, giveaway, I believe. You can spin right. pounds. It's pounds, right? As long as you can spin pounds. So. I don't remember if we said pounds or euros. Or whatever. Amazon. Dot, yeah, as long as you can buy something on Amazon.uk. So. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next email is for our message is from Dixie Turner. This person might sound familiar, everybody. 
Digital Foundry gave an official reveal for the Xbox Scorpio, and they included exciting news about height indicators with the sound output. Just to tell you, I'm not certain that everybody will be able to take advantage of this. I posed a question on the Sonos um, question board. X Xbox Scorpio will use Dolby Atmos. This will also be brought through to the existing Xbox One and Xbox One S. Spatial audio in the form of Dolby Atmos will effectively include a height component for 7.1 surround across these systems. Which Sonos audio components are or will be ready for using this sound dimensionality? And is Sonos compatible with Dolby Atmos currently? None are ready now. No idea if, when they will be ready. And no, Sonos is not compatible with Dolby Atmos currently. Yeah, so that was uh, Richard there. Um, I can't. I can't look at that <laughs> right now. Um, so that was Richard. Um, he he basically was putting out there um, about what we were saying. Guys, and you're chit chatting back and forth. <laughs> Just ignore it, Bron. <laughs> okay. Rob Rob answered it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know that. What one more? Want to get one more Skype sound on there? Anybody? One more time. No? I heard nothing. <laughs> uh, he was just putting in the thing about the audio we talked about earlier, about the 7.1, the height that you talked about, Rob. Um, he was putting in uh, the message of Sonos. If you guys aren't familiar with Sonos speakers, pretty cool. Um, something I would like to have, but they're on the... It's multi-room, isn't it? Or oh, it's, are they it's, doing different stuff now? The, it's Yeah, multi, the multi-room. It's crazy. It's it's awesome. Um but he was, he posted on the board and and he sent he's the email and we don't need to go through the whole email because he got his got it across I'm kind of explaining it now, um, but he posted into their boards and said which Sonos audio components are and will be ready for using the sound, you know this new sound features. Um, he said within six minutes he received an answer from a veteran on the community board. He could not tell if it was a Sonos employee, but his post count was very high. The response was, none are ready now, no idea if, when they will be ready, and no, Sonos is not compatible with Dolby Atmos uh, currently. So if you have one of the uh, Sonos setups, then it doesn't look like you'll be able to take advantage of the new uh, the new sound. It, it sounds like, Rob, when you were saying, it's like, you got to get a new receiver, you got to get new, all new speakers, things like that, so... Um, pretty crazy well you have to do that stuff anyway because i mean uh i've got three receivers in the garage right now because one was actually two of them are like component only one of them is super old it's got like s video on it. i just don't want to throw it away i don't know why and you know i had to get a new one because of hdmi and so you wind up having to switch out your receivers anyway because of video inputs right and you know, it's worth it just to get the the biggest and best so you can get the support. And it would be really nice if they can start adding all this stuff with firmware updates. Because right. yeah, I would think that, you know, as long as you have the physical connections for the speakers, you know, everything else is kind of just like software. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And I believe his brother is in the uh, in the chat right now because he says he uses the sound bar from Sonos. I was like, "How do you know?" <laughs> Seeing that Gaber Tag has the same last name, and <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but very cool. Yeah, Sonos is is pretty neat. So, all right, um, Rob, quickly, what are they going to be uh, able to purchase this week? Okay, new titles coming out for the week of April 10th through the 16th. Uh, there's a couple two tree things. We have Yuka Laylee on April 11th. Interesting name. Well, it's uh, Yuka well, it's a uh, the group of people who made banjo kazooie uh, yeah. are the makers of Yuka Laylee. It's a banjo kazooie, yeah, you know, type. And a Windows 10 version's coming also, as well, looks like, soon. Uh, crawl, out on the 11th, we have Aero, 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 
A A E R O, however you say that. And the sexy brutal on the twelfth. So a couple things, not a whole lot. Looks like only four. And um that's it for this week. All right. Then uh, Games with Gold for uh, the next couple of days here. We're going to have the final week of Evolve Ultimate Edition for Xbox One. Rise, Son of Rome started last week. Uh, you have through the end of April to grab that one. That's definitely a, a great, great game. And it's a it's like the release title game for yep. Xbox One S. So uh, it's just amazing how well that game looks and knowing now that it's what almost four years old well three and a half years old Mm -hmm. and then uh for the xbox 360 we're halfway through darksiders that one is going to cycle out on the 15th and um if you're going to be making any purchases of xbox related stuff or not xbox related stuff on uh, on Amazon.com, uh, please make sure to use our affiliate link. You can find that at our website. Just go to this xboxlife.com, click on the big Amazon logo. That'll take you to uh, Amazon where you can search and fill up your cart with whatever you want. Just make sure to do that each and every time. It does not cost you anything extra whatsoever, but we get a teeny tiny little thanks from Amazon for sending you their way. And uh, that really helps us uh, defray server costs and also to do uh, giveaways and all that good stuff for our uh, contests and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, Also, if you're on iTunes, uh, please make sure to find the show and give us a five-star review. Uh, Five-star reviews mean a lot on the iTunes store, and the more of them that you have, the higher up you are in the ranks and uh, they let more and more people know about the show. So that helps us uh, grow the community. And uh, I think that's about it for episode 431, at least for me. How about you guys? Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, thanks again for donations and for a new Patreon subscriber. We, uh, we greatly appreciate it. So, and uh, no, I'm good. I will you know, be back next week. Uh, with that, yep. I'm from BJ Swick 33. And I'm Rob, also known as Prestar. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch y'all next week. And I'm Mark K. Wingman 709, taking off.